This time on Highway Through Hell. Come on, baby. A remote mountain wreck. No, I think we're on the wrong road. Has Team Green in deep. The timber's gonna snob. Jamie takes a mighty swing. It's gonna go like this. At a jackknife semi. Off the road. And coming in hot. A roadside recovery. Oh yeah. Reveals Colin's nightmare. This is where I'm gonna die. around the corner and you're going into slush. A slick night on BC's Coquihalla Highway <laughs> has caught the attention of truckers and maintenance crews. We're always watching, we're always looking at the sky. We're going to get something here pretty quick. So right now we got everybody out. At 11 p.m. Anybody got any eyes on the situation? South, right around the corner, the gas crashed. Jamie's lead driver, Colin McLean. All right, copy that. Is called to an accident 30 miles northeast of Hope. Apparently, a tractor trailer lost control and uh, ended up grinding his truck up on the no posts. And we got a wrecker coming right now. Tonight, Collins operating HR-116, the last modern heavy wrecker in Jamie's fleet. She's just a beautiful, beautiful truck. Watch out for that uh, accident scene up there. We're just rolling up on it now. Not exactly sure what's going on here yet. Go move. Well, he stuffed her in there pretty good. The driver lost control. <laughs> Grinding to a halt on the concrete divider. Ugly, 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 ugly. One of the semi's fuel tanks oh, fuel. was ruptured during the crash. Is this all fuel that's going by? No, this is antifreeze too. The truck's leaking quite a lot of diesel. It's really important that I get this thing cleaned up. The wreck is blocking the fast lane. And I'll just skid the whole thing down there, get us off the road. So Colin needs to work quickly. Let's get this guy off this no post. We need to get this out of here. We want to get this job done as quick as we can. Yeah, you lot. With the semi off the no post. Just going to attach to the front end of the tractor and drag him down there. Colin moves the wreck off to the side to prep it for the tow back to Hope. I called John Rogers to come up in a tundra. 10-4, copy that. So that we can pump out the diesel, get rid of any kind of leakage. Oh, look at this guy. But as Colin continues the job. Coming in hot. Look at this guy. Wow! Down about 10. There goes 60,000 pounds. Some drivers aren't slowing down. Now, Colin needs to work under the rig, near the live lane. You're on the ground, you're in a tight working area. You got guys flying by you at 100 kilometers an hour. You got nowhere to go. This is where I'm gonna die. Stuck underneath the drive tires. I, I already know it. On the highway through hell, closure is not an option. On the coke. 
traffic isn't slowing down. As Colin works under a semi at the side of the highway. When a truck blows by you at that speed, and you're out there working five or six feet away from it, you feel it. You, you feel the wind, you, you feel the rumble. I've already had the dream. Some guy's going to come plowing in. I'm going to see it. I'm going to hear it. I just I already know. So that's how I'm going out. John Rogers arrives to clean up the spill and pump out the leaking fuel. Tonight, I'm driving Tundra 107. It's got a big tank in the back, which we use for pumping diesel out of tanks that have been compromised. So it's in there nicely. Perfect. Might as well draining. The driver's side's completely ruptured, so. OK. We want to make sure that we're not going to be leaking any diesel as we're driving down the road here. another semi speeds by. A patrol car gives chase. That was nice to see. A trucker blows by us. Uh, you see the officers jump into action like that. It was a good feeling. John pumps the last of the fuel out of the rig. We got the fuel pumped out. It's almost good to go. And then uh, we'll be clear the scene. while Colin finishes caging the brakes. It's always a big relief that I made it out of another one. John, you good? You clear? Yeah, go ahead, Colin. And heads back down the mountain in HR 116. I really love operating that heavy wrecker. This winter, Jamie's been counting on his growing fleet of classic wreckers to handle most of the workload and cut costs. When you get rid of that brand new big truck with the big payment, you're in charge. Even Collins had to adapt to the old iron. What do we got going on here? Whether he likes it or not. With all the trucks is an adventure, but with Mo, it's a little bit of a classic adventure. Yeah, it's open. This is very possibly the last job for HR 116. You got your long johns on? It's damn cold there. Maybe it's too cold for them to come to work. It's a bitter morning in the BC interior. Christmas shopping. <laughs> Al Quiring and his heavy wrecker are a long way from home. We're headed up to the North Pole to go get Santa Slay's got to bury dead. We're leaving the clouds and the fog. Heading into the Smilkameen Paradise. We're headed out behind a little uh, coal mining town, kind of in a forgotten part of British Columbia named Colmont for a customer who's gone off the logging road. Al's right-hand man. Yeah, this is cool. I haven't been on this road before. Gord Boyd is close behind. Yo, I love the back roads. In wintertime? Absolutely. The wreck is in the mountains on the far side of Colmont, a historic town that sprung up during the Caribou Gold Rush. That's gold country and coal. And I can always tell when I get uh, near gold because my feet get hot. <laughs> to get to the job. It'll get a little rough. Oh. Al and Gord face unfamiliar logging roads covered in deep snow. 
This is the type of road where you come around the corner and you might see a abominable snowman. It snowed 20 or 30 centimeters a day prior, and then the temperature just drops. Ooh, there's a corner I wouldn't want to miss coming the other way. That would hurt. Oh, crap. This is something else, isn't it? You're out in the middle of nowhere. There's not a whole lot of road signs. About 20 minutes up the mountain. I hope he knows where he's going. I sure as hell don't. Spot there, Gord. Uh, it's tank tough until I go find this truck. Wait for you here? Yeah, just wait for me here. Okay. Until I can determine that this is actually the road that the accident scene is on, Gordy's got to stay back. I definitely don't want to take a dump off the road up here, too. You really got to watch out for slippery conditions. You don't want to get stuck in the ditch, especially on the deep side. We're spinning. Uh -oh. The last thing Al wants is to have to call Gord to come pull him out. I don't want to go too much further up this road. No, I think we're on the wrong road. Hope you got long pants on, because it's freaking cold. Come on, baby. On a remote logging road. Two and a half, three hours away from home. Up a nasty dead end road. Al spinning his wheels, trying to find a wreck. Waiting back down the road. No, I think we're on the wrong road. Absolutely, yeah. Gord's truck is spotted by locals. It's on the other road? Yeah, it's right down here, down to the right. Yeah, we're on the wrong road. I'll get turned around. Yeah, perfect. I appreciate that, because we'd have gone up there for miles looking oh, yeah. for it. When you're out in the little towns like this, this is the kind of people you can expect to meet. I have met the best people in the world in the smallest of towns. Twenty minutes later, Team Green is back on track. Gotta love it when locals are helpful, eh? Beauty. We're headed up the right road now, and uh, we're going to get there and get this job done. Well, looky here. Well, let's see what kind of mischief we can get ourselves into today. Okay. The logging truck lost control on a narrow curve, rolled and dumped his load down the bank. This is a B-train logging setup. A tractor with two trailers, roughly about 75 feet long. Well, good thing it hung up by them trees. Incredibly, the driver walked away. This unit is another 30 feet longer than Al's wrecker alone. Want me to reach up and grab the top of the axle there? You're going to have to pull this way. Yeah. They'll need multiple lines from Al's wrecker and Gord at the front end to bring up the extra long logging truck. Cold enough here to freeze the balls off a brass monkey. What we're going to do is grab a hold of all three of the pieces at once and slowly and carefully bring it up. Pass this up to me. I'm going to go jump on this thing. Yep. See if we go for a ride. That means several trips down the steep, snowy bank. 
in conditions much colder than the Coke. Just because the sun's shining doesn't mean it's warm out here. It's well below freezing right now. Just put that right there for you. I can get the back. It's pushing minus 20. It's friggin' cold. You gotta be really careful. You're on snow-covered rocks and bush, and you really don't know what's underneath the snow until you put your foot on it. You're gonna have a hell of a time getting back up out of there. I'll get it. There really is no other way to do this. You gotta get in there, you gotta get it hooked. <sighs> Keep moving, you don't get cold. I get this. Okay. Al's wrecker must pull the logging truck with three separate winch lines, two off his boom at the back. Side pull on. Oh, yeah. OK. And one off the side of the truck. This should be fun. This is where Al's side puller comes in really handy. He can pull directly off the side. We only have as many points of contact as we possibly can. Oh, how do I get myself into these pickles? OK. But as Al goes to work the side puller. Uh-oh. Oh, that's frozen. Gord. What? The cables froze. Controls are frozen. The extreme cold has locked up the winch. Ah. We're 300 kilometers or so away from our shop. Oh, come on. Really? My truck's frozen, and we're going to have to deal with this. We might not be using the side pull. Nearly 60 miles southwest. Anybody got any word on Highway 3? Jamie Davis rolls to an urgent call on a winding mountain road. We just got a call for a jackknife semi of four or five K west of Manning Park. See what we can do. Jamie's operating what's become his most important record this winter, his classic Holmes 850, Mighty Mo. I'm becoming comfortable with Mighty Mo. Man and machine, we're working together. Me and this truck are becoming one. Where's this accident at? The crash is up on Allison Pass, the highest point between Hope and Princeton. You're on top of the mountain. It's icy and slippery and cold up there. I did a tractor trailer right over the bank here. My highest ever wreck was down that bank. It's easy to come around a corner and find an area that's frozen, and that equals trouble. I've got Paris coming out. I'm pretty sure we're going to need some flagging there, so I've made that call already. Well, it's our guys. How did they beat us here? Thunder's doing its job. It's good. The semi jackknifed into the barrier, crushing the trailer into the cab. So it's going to be a bad single-leg traffic right now. Are you loaded? Empty. Empty? OK. To get the wreck from the narrow highway, Jamie needs to straighten the tractor trailer. We're just going to get the trailer, flip it around the other way. OK. Thank you. The accident is on a slick downhill curve. A situation that has Jamie's cousin, Paris, on high alert. I was getting frustrated with these truck drivers. Half are doing 100 kilometers by us, no problem. These guys slow down to go by it. Jamie will try to straighten the semi the fastest way he knows how. 
in one swift maneuver. I'm just gonna drive ahead with it. I'm gonna put a line out to it and just drive in an arc. Instead of using Mighty Moe's mechanical winch. A mechanical winch, winch is slower, takes longer. Jamie will take advantage of the slippery road and the Moe's powertrain. Using a single line and brute force, Mighty Mo will simply drive forward to swing the trailer around 180 degrees and straighten out the semi. It's gonna go like this, right around. Okay. Mighty Mo has a big, huge automatic transmission in it. But how does this truck react? How's it gonna pull? We don't know that yet. Jamie will need the entire highway to pull off the 180. I'm gonna wait for the moment when there's no traffic and whiz this trailer around. I'm nervous. Last thing I wanna see is something unexpected. But as Jamie and the Mo start the swing. Oh, no. Off the road. No, 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 no. I have never met Springs ever in Falls so bad in my life. Yeah, when I went north, it was about minus 24. Uh-oh. Oh, that's frozen. On one of the coldest days of winter, Al and Gord are on a remote mountain road, trying to recover a 75-foot logging track. All the makings of a party, vertical slopes, deep snow, and an upside-down truck. Gord, what? Cables froze. The extreme temperature has seized up one of Al's winches. Wow, OK. You get up into minus 20, sometimes the truck is frozen over. Oh, come on. Really? Let's see how we get that pry bar. Pry bar is what it takes, and uh, I know a couple tricks. The logging truck may still be drivable if Alan Gord can get it back on the road. Owner of the truck wants this thing back to his shop so he can fix it and get it back out on the road and back to making money. But getting the massive unit up top will be tough without Al's side puller. Just push on it a bit. Just work the lever? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. You apply a little bit of pressure. Percussive therapy, as we like to call it. Oh, there we go. OK, work it the other way. Stiff, but she's working. OK. The side puller okay. is back in business. Got the mechanism freed up, and uh, now we're going to get the game on and get out of here, get home for dinner. It's freaking cold. Al and Gord anchor their wreckers down. Might maybe throw your other spade down, too. Yeah. Help stop you from pivoting. That's good. OK. And begin to wrestle the 75-foot wreck up the steep slope. I'll start in the middle. Yep. And work the back. Yep. Four winch lines on there. And you just keep taking tension as much as you can. Yep. That truck weighs 60,000 pounds, and you're parked on a 10% grade. All right, here we go. You just don't want to go over the bank, too. Highway 3. He's folded over towards the ditch. Apparently, they've closed the highway now. Jamie's working fast to clear a jackknife semi. 
by sliding it around 180 degrees. When I'm pulling this trailer around, I've got to be really careful. But as the back end begins to swing out, oh, no. a rogue driver slips by. Off the road! When the car came by me, I thought to myself, wow, he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. These guys really need to obey traffic control because they keep everybody safe. With the driver safely passed, Jamie keeps going. Mighty Moe's powerful motor has the jackknife straightened out in seconds. That was easy. I'm just gonna turn around now and get the front end. Jamie Davis is on scene of that wreck. We should have it cleaned up in no time, but it's off the highway. To finish the job, Jamie releases the tractor from the trailer. We're going to separate the units and haul them back to the yard. Then lines up Mighty Mo with the tractor to tow it away. get out of the way as quickly as possible. It's a lot easier to pick up a tractor by the back end. You avoid all the bumper, you avoid pulling the drive shafts. So then you turn around, I wrap up the signs and everything, and yeah, good. Moments later, another of Jamie's rebuilt wreckers pulls up. Pretty cool truck, eh? HR-126 will tow the trailer away. First time me and you have been together in a wreck, eh? Yeah, I missed the good stuff. Yeah. Cam will pull up and grab the other unit. Jamie's classic fleet gets it done. So I'm all good to go. Good to go, yep. Yeah. Riding on a high, the boss leads the way home in Mighty Mo. Oh, good to go. Three is good. It's a heavy recovery truck, and that's what it was built for. Everything went together today. Having the flagging truck and having Mighty Mo and uh, 126 get the same job together. Yeah, running the whole business with just like this, I'd, I'd be great. <laughs> when I can use that truck out there, like every day, like it was a brand new truck and, and do these jobs, that's a win for me. On a logging road, Al and Gord are trying to bring up a 75-foot B-train buried in the snow. The customer's really relying on us to not make the situation worse, so we got to be very careful doing this. Target! Dozens of logs were dumped in the crash pinning down the rear trailer. Oh, you'd be surprised how heavy that thing is. Pull on our back guard. Now, logs are clinging to a piece of the trailer's frame called bunks. Sneezy, Gord. Keep an eye, there's some logs that hung up in the buttons, just in case something flies up. Okay. Bunks are the 10-foot-high metal posts that secure the load to the trailer. On a logging setup, you'll find pairs of bunks down the length of the trailer. 
logs weighing down the bunks are getting in the way. We've got a few logs hung up at the very back of the trailer. There could be a problem, because there is a fair bit of weight there. And we got to watch that bunk at the bottom. Back road in the BC interior. It's easy, Gord. No call. Priring towing is in a battle to bring up a 40 ton logging truck pinned down by its spilled load. You're on a hill, you got gravity working against you. And the winch force is, is huge. Al and Gord work their winches to try and remove the last of the load. If all goes well, those are going to dislodge and fall down the hill away from us and stop being a problem. But the more they try to shake off the logs. Al, I got to pull ahead a little bit. The closer the front end of the wreck comes to Gord's truck. It's coming forward as you're bringing it over. Let's give it a little more, just a little of it. I'm keeping an eye on it. I don't want this thing getting too close to me. Keep going. It'll miss you. OK. Not by much. Take her away, Gord. Pull on her. Keep going. Just watch for debris. This timber's probably going to snap. It's almost there. And just one more little tug, it'll come over. The trailer is finally free from the logs. Take her away, Gord. Empty log trucks are way lighter than loaded ones. Now, she's coming now. They have to get the tractor onto its wheels. She's getting a little too close for comfort. Without running into the back of Gord's wrecker. Hold on, Al. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just east of Hope. Jamie's classic trucks return to home base after the quick recovery at Allison Pass. This winter, the majority of our fleet is paid for. We're continuing to dial down the costs. Mighty Mo is really helping us turn the page to a new success. With his growing fleet of debt-free older wreckers getting jobs done, Jamie's last high-end truck, HR-116, may not be around much longer. Do you have a big truck payment that's $10,000 a month? I want to go out and do the job quicker and better than anybody else, but I'm also wrestling with the fact of financial reality. At the mountainside recovery. It'll miss you. OK. Not by much. A 75-foot logging truck inches up the bank and inches in. OK, hold up. To the back of Gord's heavy wrecker. 
Yeah, I think I'm a little too close here. I don't want it slamming into the truck, and I certainly don't want it slamming into me. Back her off. Yep. Yeah, let's start pulling this thing out. You got to be cautious. I don't want to be calling the office that it's been wrecked. You're good. You're good. Just roll ahead a little. Better be safe than phoning my dad, telling him we got to buy a fender, so. Can we just pull ahead? Gord repositions, so the two trailers and the 20,000-pound tractor can squeeze onto the road. Be careful. OK. Between Al and Gord's trucks. So you just keep pulling it, and I'll yep. keep pulling the truck. At this particular point, it's teetering on the balance. If we're not careful, things can go wrong right here. OK, here we go. We got the tractor on the ground. We still have the trailers. We're not done yet. OK, tighten her up. Rig. I see what he's gonna do. And Al pulls the last section of the trailer onto solid ground. It really doesn't get any better than that. The sooner we're done, the sooner we're back on that storm mountain. That's my Sasquatch call. The logging truck is up on the road, but a major obstacle lies ahead. Now we just got to get it off the mountain. Gord must snake the 75-foot wreck and his truck down the narrow, windy road. I mean, really, what's the worst that could happen? And he's the only one who can do it. Al's on the wrong side of it, and he's facing the wrong way. Anytime any of our guys are doing something dangerous, absolutely I'm concerned. At that point, I have to rely on Gord's experience and his judgment. We're about to go down the road. Very icy, very steep. This is There's a chance when he goes out of sight, we could hear a crunch, and it ain't going to be a good one. Just watch that corner. The tractor, its two trailers, and Gord's 50-ton record. We got to run the trailer up on the bank, but that's OK. It's not going to hurt anything have to make it around tight switchbacks, not built for a convoy this long. Slow and easy. That's how you get this one done. There's going to be some challenges taking this down the hill. The Super B is 75 feet long. Gordy's truck is another 40 some odd feet. Yeah, this is the kind of situation where that's is not what you want. You'd wind up going straight off that corner. And you look like an idiot, and Al's got to pull you out of the river. And it's never a good thing when Al has to pull you out of the river. Gord makes it past the first curves, but the final switchback. See if that tree's been clipped a few times by the bumps of the traders? Will be the tightest turn yet. You can see the mark on the tree where the logging trucks have hit it. I know that corner's going to mess me up.
with a 75-foot logging truck in tow. Gord Boyd, trying to make it down the mountain. No, we didn't. Sort of kissed a tree, but that's one of those give me 40 acres and I'll turn this rig around kind of deals. Fine and dandy on a straight road, but not on a logging road. Luckily, the snag caused no damage. Logging rigging is probably the strongest you're ever going to see. It's meant to take abuse. Go on, Earl. Gord calls in Al, who's still up the hill. Yeah, I'm just backing up here. Yeah, well, I'm going to need you to back down and winch the ass in. Of the around for me. Rather than continue dragging it and get it jammed up against a tree, Gord stop. One quick move. Pulled the trailer onto the road. And away he went. And the logging truck is out of the woods. At the first wide spot down the road. Yeah, so far so good. They separate the B train to each tow a piece of the prize all the way home. Gordy and I, we worked good together. Had a couple little problems we had to overcome, but tic-tac-toe, the acquiring team, we pulled through. Yeah, I don't think it'll take us very long to get those. What do you got in here? Toolbox. In hope. It's going to merit. Apparently, there's a possible buyer. Jamie gets ready to take the last modern wrecker in his fleet, HR 116, for a drive. Okay, so I guess we can go. Good to go. spent a lifetime in this business. Oh, I've bought and sold probably more trucks than most people have owned. I'm taking 116 up to Merritt. The company up there, they just want to do one last check over before they commit to it. I love wheeling and dealing. I like bringing things in. And I love selling stuff, too. 600 horsepower engine, 18 speed, double locker rear ends. Like, this is a very tough truck. Jamie arrives at the potential buyers, a company with a yard 60 miles north of Hope, reliable towing. 18 speed, 600 horsepower, and double lockers. Like, it, it's a great truck. Yeah, we got a 50 ton sitting in our yard. That's a beautiful truck, like it really is. All heavy spec and everything else. Doesn't take long. Loving it, man. Loving it. To make a decision. You know how excited these guys are. Are they? In one week, the new owners will take the truck off Jamie's hands. That'll be our last heavy duty truck payment that exists and mark the end of an era. We're gonna to continue to fine tune the cost here. Having the whole fleet, older trucks that are paid for is gonna be a good thing for us. We own it all and I'm gonna do it the old school way. This is really all about who will be the last man standing and it'll be me. Next time on Highway Through Hell. Go, get out of there. An ice storm. Brought our town to a standstill. Whoop. Has Ken. Boy, you're close here. In a struggle. We're right on the edge. To save mission. Whoa, whoa. A delicate job. Nothing, he'll wait there. 
tests Jamie. Oh. Then an unexpected turn. Pull it, pull it. Ah. Tilts the recovery <laughs> towards disaster. 